when you play with different artists, you obviously don't use that big of a rig everywhere you go. Um, now, for your purposes, when would you use a rack versus when you would when would you use stands? Um, I would tend to um, most of the most of the work I'm doing is kind of bigger production stuff as far as the work I'm doing, you know. Um, however, I'm, I moved to New York playing in clubs, playing with different singer-songwriters, people when they didn't have deals and stuff, and I still, um, that's still my passion is playing small gigs, and I don't care how big the place is, all I care about is the music, you know, so, and a lot of those cases, if there are four bands in a night, um, I'm not going to be carrying a rack and setting it up, you know. Um, it, it tends to, uh, yeah, it, it can just clutter things up. It's a really small stage, so I kind of have to take each situation for what it is. Um, but almost always when I'm touring now, when there is a production, and I will use the rack. Or if, I, or if it's in one of these clubs and I have someone to help me. Um, but, because um, it's also, the good thing about a rack, it, it is easy to get more stuff off the stage quicker. You know, you can grab both sides of, again, I, I never use a crossbar. I always have two different sides of the rack with kind of larger feet to kind of make things stable, and including mounted uh, hanging floor toms. But uh, in those cases, you know, you can pick the whole thing up and move it off. But if I'm using a, a four-piece kit with a couple cymbal stands and, um, and maybe a laptop or something like that, I would tend to use traditional hardware. Oh. Okay. Dude, Dan, thanks again for coming out. Dude. You got it, man. It's awesome. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Long overdue. I know, I know.